as we're looking at the training screen and we see our raw EEG scrolling across the screen, we notice that we have quite a bit of screen space on our computer monitor. So our first step is to maximize. If you go up to the upper right hand corner, of course, next to your red X is the maximize button. This is simply a Windows property. So as I click maximize, you're going to notice it's going to fill out the monitor screen. It's a little easier to see some of the different displays along with looking at the raw EEG and some of the component trends. As I go back up to the upper right hand or upper left hand corner to data and we click, as we slide down, we notice that we have the notch filters. So we scroll down. And you notice I have 60 Hz notch filter on. I'm just I'm for this purpose of this demonstration, I'm also going to turn on the 50 because the raw EEG that we were looking at was just random noise from a signal generator. I wanted to clean it up a little bit. So as we scroll in or zoom in to the raw EEG, we notice that we see a rather detailed example of the EEG and it is scrolling. As I hit the plus key on my keyboard, and it's actually shift plus because I'm using a laptop, I can increase the scale and we'll notice as it sweeps back by, I can increase the scale of the EEG. Okay. Now to drop that back down, I can simply hit the minus key and we notice the scale is going back down. Okay. There's several keystrokes available to you with the BrainMaster 2.5 software and then also will be in 3.0. And really the, the best place to find all of those is the Quick Start Manual. We give you a complete template that tells you all of your keystrokes and that'll help guide you for some shortcuts because it's a little easier oftentimes to use keys than the mouse. But as we scroll back towards the left, we're going to zoom in. And we're going to notice that under our filter waveforms, it's giving us our, our component and its frequency bandwidth. If this 4 to 7 was, for instance, 2 to 7, it would show up here. And then we see our beta and our high beta. As we're looking at the waveforms, we see they're colored and they match. It's a uniform color palette that continues from panel to panel, theta is always going to be a dark blue, beta is going to always be a fuchsia, and high beta is always going to be a goldish yellow. As I look at the waveform, I notice I have two fuchsia lines outside of it. These lines represent the threshold. Okay, And then you'll notice that these lines also are under beta and high beta. So for instance, high beta, the goal is for this waveform to be inside the two lines. With beta, since it's a reward or a go, we want the waveform outside the lines. And so, so on. I'm going to scroll completely to the right side of the screen. And we're going to see some numbers with a P colon. Okay, and as we zoom in on those, these are telling you the current percent time over threshold numbers. Okay, and see how they fluctuate? These are the actual where you are currently in percentage time over threshold, and it is exponentially damped. As I scroll up slightly, you also see that we tell you the amount of time the raw EEG is displayed and we're seeing a sample of 7.3 seconds. This number may be different on your monitor. It depends on the amount of pixels on your particular screen. You may see 9.8, you may see slightly smaller. It depends on what the resolution of your screen is set at. Okay.